Hi, I'm Linda Mao, and welcome to Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth and speak with curator Andrea Carnes about the exhibition Framing Desire, Photography and Video. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm Linda Mal, and I'm here at the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth speaking with curator Andrea Carnes about the museum's current exhibition, Framing Desire. Andrea, thank you so much for speaking with me thank today. Thank you, happy to do it. This exhibition showcases some the museum's increasingly impressive photography collection and seems to be, at least in part, a celebration mm -hmm. of some recent acquisitions. So I'd love to hear from you how this exhibition came together and where the idea from the exhibition came from. Sure, um, well, we at the Modern have we started collecting photography about 15 years ago mm -hmm. and video, but as we moved into our new building, we decided um, to focus elsewhere for a while, mm -hmm. so that because we had all these giant spaces to fill and you know big walls to to hang on, and because of that, photography got a little pushed to the back burner, but not on purpose, and we always knew that we wanted to pick it back up. Photography is very important to us as a collecting institution, mm -hmm. as is video. So we decided it was high time to get back on that. And so we spent about a year, maybe more than a year, researching photographers um, and their works and video videographers and their works to try to figure out what we might want to present to our acquisition committee and mm -hmm. then we made a big presentation and are so fortunate now to um, have over 40 new works in the collection. Yeah, over 40 and right. a, a, lot. A, ton of new, <laughs> a ton of new artists too. Yes. This particular exhibition, although it's some new acquisitions and some pieces that were already in the collection, right. it's 34, is that correct, artists slash artist groups or yes. creative teams? Um, and a lot of really, really big names mm -hmm. that have been recently acquired. Do you want to talk about some of the, the really exciting new pieces that you've acquired? Sure. We wanted to give the collection of, we wanted to add to the collection of photography, photography that we already had um, to give context what we already, to what we already had, but also um, to, to just highlight some of the people, some of the artists we thought would really meaningfully add to the collection mm -hmm. that were not yet in the collection. One example of this is the Gordon Mata Clark images behind mm -hmm. us. Um, these are early photographs of his from 1973 of building cuts mm -hmm. in Milan. And this was one of his first times to draw in buildings, um, itinerant buildings, and then cut through the, the drawings to show these communal horizons within the building. So mm -hmm. we felt like that was very important because it bridges conceptual art and photography. Exactly. And so we thought, you know, that would be an important thing, an important aspect of photography to represent within the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And we were thrilled that this, this suite of Gordon Monte Clark photographs was available. Was available. Exactly right. right. Well, since you mentioned uh, works that bridge Mm -hmm. Bridge conceptual art with photography or videography. Uh, we can hear behind us this this song from this piece. Would you like to tell right. us a little bit about that? Sure. the The video is called "A Lot of Sorrow" and it's by the Icelandic artist Ragnar Kjartansson. And Ragnar focuses a lot of his work he uh, on melancholy, mm -hmm. and but he's a performance artist as well as. A video artist. So the piece that we have, A Lot of Sorrow, combines those two things yes. because it was an actual performance that was done on the lawn of MoMA PS1 by the American indie band The National and they're singing their song Sorrow and um, Ragnar asked them if they would play the song for six hours over and over again. Mm -hmm. Repeatedly and continuously. And part of that was because Ragnar, it's like one of his all-time favorite songs, yeah. so he can't get enough of it. But part of it, of course, for the band was like this challenge of getting through this marathon performance. Absolutely. And then for the crowd to mm -hmm. like stay with it, stay with the performance, cheer yeah. on the band to help them get through this mega concert. Exactly right. Um, but that work also touches on a lot of of the kind of the idea, the theme behind this exhibition, mm -hmm. which is desire. Mm -hmm. So, in that piece, you know, it touches on the artist's desire to hear the song over and over again, the band's desire to actually make it through without losing it. Right. You know, and the crowd's desire to stay with it, but also 
all of their desire to kind of work through the emotion mm -hmm. of sorrow. So, and the piece is called A Lot of Sorrow. So, you know, it's, it's got humor in it as well. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, a couple different ways these artists have chosen to to address desire mm -hmm. or to, to use desire, and maybe those are the two distinctions. Sure. There are some that sort of address it very directly. Mm -hmm. Example, Mitzi Kiesler, the mm -hmm. Hubbard Burschler, mm -hmm. uh, to be very direct. Mm -hmm. And then there are others that sort of use photography mm -hmm. as a way of having desire be an undercurrent in mm -hmm. their work. It's less overt. And so I want to talk a little bit about this Frank Field piece and how, in your mind, it it does elicit desire and it mm -hmm. does deal with desire just in a less direct way. Sure, well this, this piece by Frank Thiel is an ice glacier in, um, in Argentina, in the southernmost region of Patagonia. So these glaciers are constantly shifting and changing. And what I, when I think about this in relationship to desire, um, I think about the artist's desire to capture a fleeting moment mm -hmm. because the glaciers are changing always, so you would not ever see this exact facade, this exact cliff face if you went, you know, so to capture, the desire to capture this sublime moment of grandeur mm -hmm. that will never be seen again in this exact way. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in, in this room in general, we have, this is all, we're in scapes now. So they're all landscapes. And on this side of the room, we have a jungle, we have some earth, we have a glacier, and then we have this, uh, uh, the mountains. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of the room, we have two cityscapes. Mm -hmm. So it's this very interesting combination of something that is this, like, the smallness of man mm -hmm. next to this, giant, massive, amazing glacier. And then on the other side of the room, we have these views of cities um, that are, you know, in, I like that juxtaposition. They're both scapes of different sorts. So we're standing in front of a video piece mm -hmm. called The Crying Game. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about this piece? Sure, it's a work by the artist Artemio. He lives and works in Mexico City. And what he did for this work was splice together different scenes, mostly from film, but also from television, of like famous crying scenes mm -hmm. of people crying. So it's, it's a low quality video, and that's part of what Artemio does. His work is much about the, the notion of pirating and bootleg materials. Mm -hmm. So he likes to give it that sort of like rough quality so that you know it's not the real thing exactly. But when he splices together all of the crying without the context of the rest of the film or even a full scene, you know, what you get is disturbing at times, it's humorous at times, it's completely strange. Um, but how it fits into the context of the exhibition or the theme of desire, I think, is that, you know, it expresses the actor's desire to emote on cue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it also, the notion of us as viewers, sort of, again, the, the idea of crying and the cathartic moment that that creates, the idea of the desire to work through sadness or work through joy, through tears. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, this exhibition is taking up a large portion of the museum and it's on view all the way through the summer. Mm -hmm. and not for much longer, but currently there's a, still the focus show is still photography. So right. I'm noticing yes. how much photography is in the museum yes. right now. And you mentioned before how you had sort of gotten away from photography, but never really forgot that it was important to the museum. Sure, yes. Are you guys really conscious of, or how conscious is the real question, are you of how much of a statement you're making about the importance of photography? Well, I think we want to show our support for photography, um, for photographers and video artists in a way that, um, you know, is, is good for all of us. I mean, a part of our sort of mission is to collect what's happening now mm -hmm. and what's relevant now, as well as, you know, things from the past. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, photography is undeniable and we, we just really are, it's important to us to have it be a large part of the collection. Yes. Um, we've always been enthusiastic about photography and we will continue to collect. I mean, this is sort of chapter two. Mm -hmm. There will be a chapter three. There will be a chapter four as time goes on. We want to thank Andrea for speaking with us. For more information on the exhibition, go to themodern.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching.
I still got your polar.